In this lesson, we'll take a look at making some connections using exponential models. We'll take a look at two examples of uh, like practical examples using uh, exponential models to model, uh, in this case, a bacteria population's growth. We're told that a bacteria population grows exponentially, so that tells us we can use an exponential model. The population grew from 1,000 to 25,000 in a day, and we're asked to find the population after 12 hours. Now, it is exponential growth, so you can't just take the 1,000 and 25,000 and average them. It just doesn't work that way because it's not linear growth, it's exponential. Now we're told that we start, we're start. we starting with 1,000, so the population at time zero would be 1,000, and the population after 24 hours is the 25,000, so we're going to deal in hours, not in days. Now because of the fact that it, it the population is growing exponentially, this is what our exponential model is going to look like. The population at any certain time is p naught times e to the kt, e to the kt, and so we're gonna we have to solve to find what p naught is, and you'll see what that is in a moment, and then solve for this uh, constant here. This that's actually called a growth constant. So I'm going to use uh, p of zero is a thousand, so we'll put a thousand in place of the population, and of course the time would be zero, so we'll put zero in place of t. So k times zero is zero. And then we would get uh, e to the power of 0, of course, is 1. So this is actually just 1 times the p sub 0, or p naught, which means that the p naught is 1,000. So in this formula, p naught is the original amount. So from here on in, any kinds of questions like this, you could just use, well, that's the, what we're starting with, so the p naught is 1,000. Now we have to find the growth constant here as well. And so I'm going to substitute 25,000 in place of uh, the population. And here's our formula so far, putting the 1,000 in place of p naught. So we're going to put 25,000 in place of the population, and the, tw the time will be 24 hours. So 24 in place of time here, 25,000 in place of the population. And we'll solve for k. So the first thing I would do is divide out the 1,000. And then we'll get 25, 25 because 25,000 divided by 1,000 is 25. The 1,000 is divided here, and we're just left with e to the 24k. Now I want to solve for k here, so I'm going to put this in the equivalent uh, logarithmic form. So the exponent 24k would equal, since the base is e, would equal the ln of 25, or the logarithm base e of 25, which is ln. To find k then, we would divide it to 24. So the constant is the ln of 25 over 24. And you can, we can put that in place of k here, and that would be our formula. This actually does simplify, and if you remember some of these properties of logarithms and lons, because 25 is a perfect square, we could write this as uh, 25 as 5 squared. And because this logarithm, um, this is a logarithm, we can rewrite this as 2. We can write a 2 down in front and write it as 2 ln 5. And the reason that makes this simpler is because that 2 then will divide into 24. And, and that's just a, a property of logarithms. The 2 will divide into the 24, leaving a 12 in the denominator. So a simpler form of the constant would be it's the ln of 5 over 12. So, substituting the ln of 5 over 12 in place of k here, uh, the population at time t would be 1,000 times e to the uh, ln 5 over 12 times the time. So that's what I have up here. So we're asked to find the population after 12 hours. So we'll put 12 in place of time. So we're putting 12 here. Now those 12s divide out, so actually we're left with e to the ln of 5. And if you remember, the base of this logarithm is e, the same as the base here. So e to the the power of the ln of 5 would equal just 5. So this is actually just 1,000 times 5, which of course is 5,000. So halfway through the day, at 12 hours, the population is 5,000. One more example on the second page. And we're told that uh, radioactive strontium-90 decays exponentially. So this is a, an example of exponential decay. The amount is getting smaller because it's decaying. And we're told we have a 100 milligram sample that decays to just 10.88 milligrams in 80 years. And we're asked to determine the half-life, which is the amount of time for half of it to decay. So we started with 100. So I'm going to use S to represent the amount of strontium. So S of 0 is 100. And uh, after 80 years, it's down to 10.88. So this is our formula, and actually from the last page you might guess that uh, the 100 is going to be the s naught, and that actually is the case, but just to show you that it is, if we put 100 in place of s and 0 in place of time, um, 0 times k of course is 0, 
a to the 0 is 1, so this is actually just 1 times s0, so s0 has to be 100. So in the decay problems as well, the s sub 0 s0 amount represents the initial amount. So here's our formula. Uh, the amount of strontium in A time is 100 times e to the kt. And the k is the decay constant, we have to find that. We'll use the s of 80 is 80 years is 10.88 milligrams to find that. So the 10.88 will go in place of s, and 80 is the time, so 80 years in place of t. So dividing out the 100, we get 0 0.1088 would equal e to the 80k. And just like in the last page, we'll solve for that to constant the same way. 80k would equal the ln of 0 0.1088. So solving for the exponent, 80k equals the ln of 0 0.1088. So if we divide by 80, and we'll do this in the top of the page here, uh, k would equal that ln divided by 80. And if you want to change it to a decimal, k is approximately negative 0.02773. So filling that in our formula here, the uh, amount of strontium in a time is 100 times e to the and that decimal times time. So that's what it looks like here. Now we're asked to determine the half-life. We started with 100 milligrams. So in a half-life period, the 100 would be down to 50. So we'll put 50 in place of s and then solve for time. So I'll divide out the 100 and then this will give us a half or 0.5 equals e to the negative 0 0.02773 times time. So just like solving for time here, we wrote the exponent equals, equals the ln of 0.1088. Uh, this exponent will equal the ln of 0.5. So solving for time, we would divide out the uh, negative 0 0.02773, so the ln of 0.5 divided by that decimal will give us the time. And that works out to almost exactly 25 years. I think it's 24.99 or something like that. So the half-life is about 25 years.